all right what's going on guys we're going to uh jump straight into this video today um what i got in mind is um my overall preference on capra my opinion solely my opinion on the best setup for your axial capra now this also goes for if you're wanting to let me show you let's get it turned around here this goes if you're wanting to keep this buggy style you know the original capra cage and all that if you want to keep that or if you want to convert it over to a flat rail chassis and use a different body like i've done on the creep here um both ways work very well um this one lacks a few parts from being absolutely perfect and being the ultimate you know capra based build so uh we're gonna start off with this because i know most people really enjoy the look of the capra especially at first so we're gonna start off with this one um the best way for this capra i'm gonna drive it around for you guys a little bit just to make the uh talk a little bit more interesting i'll stop to uh point out specific parts and things of that nature can't use rear steer right now just because uh filming in one hand don't have my setup on me just wanted to get this video out just in case you guys are wondering about anything about these capras now in my opinion to keep the cage style on your capra first mod straight out of the box that i would do to this is wheels and tires and foams now everybody says this but it's you know preaching to the choir that's what it is that's one of the best upgrades you can possibly do next things next that i would do just because the stock electronics will get you by what will give you more capability is getting a set of 90 millimeter shocks now you can go with um a preference on these 90 millimeter is the best overall you can go with some uh incision 85 millimeters those would work really well as well they also offer a uh, five millimeter extended rod ends for your shocks to where you can tune between a 90, 95, and a 85, 90. So you can tune as you want with that. But I highly, highly recommend to get rid of the 100 millimeter shocks. You do not need all that flex to make this thing capable. It has plenty of flex with 90 millimeters. Next things next, which is probably one of the last parts that I put on this truck. Actually, no, I'm wrong. I changed this part right off with this truck after the two I just specified is a axial three gear transmission. Now that has changed this truck night and day. Everybody knows that the original capper transmission is uh, geared a little high. You get a little bit of wheel speed with it. And if you like that, that's fine. But if you want slow controllability, you want to go with the three gear. And as you can see, you can see the gray three gear right here. Um, I had to cut out the uh, interior a little bit. What I had to do with this truck, I'm gonna flip it over and show you guys real quick. I've mentioned this previous and before videos, but what I had to do, this was a stock um, SEX 10-2 transmission out of the ready to run vehicle. So therefore it did not have a dig set up on it. So I had to go with these SSD longer drive shafts. I had to put longer drive shafts. I think these are like, uh, like 97 to 100 and some millimeters on both sides. And when doing that also, these, these were the only ones I could find to do this. I had to extend out the rod ends a little bit or the links. I had to extend all those out and it worked out great. Now, if you were to put the dig unit back in, you could use regular incision drive shafts if you wanted to go that route. Now back to the three gear, um, the gear ratios are incredible. You get very slow crawl, as you can see, very, very slow. And you can slow crawl that capper right there, the creep, you can slow crawl it because it has a fusion with the FOC in it. That helps out tremendously. Now, any other way, like this castle system that's in this truck, I tried it with the, um, whoop, 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 whoop. I tried it with the capper transmission and it just, it did not perform well at all, you guys. So, yes, I do still have the capper transmission in that, but I would love for it to be three gear. I have all the stuff to do it. I just don't have the transmission because I've just been lazy. 
So, do the three gear transmission swap. You can get the, um, let me show you the skid plate. You can get the skid plate from Spare Times Hobby. Spare Time Hobbies. It's a website you can go online. He offers a bunch of 3D parts and it will completely adapt the skid plate from uh, the kind of V bottom boat type deal they had going on to a flat skid made of Delrin and it'll give you the ability to mount up your Axial 3 gear. That is one of the best upgrades you can do to this truck. Now, if you are getting the stock Axial Capper 1.9 non rear steer version, which I don't recommend because since I've had this truck with rear steer, especially on the buggy, I'm in love with it. It is 10 to 1 better than just a front steer Capra on the buggy, which I could rear steer this creep here and that would, you know, improve it in ways, but I like to keep it strictly dig features. So there's um, multiple ways you can go about setting up a Capra and it still be great. But as the buggy, do a rear steer after your, um, do rear steer after your three gear transmission swap. Now you want to get into a good set of electronics and I'm preaching this, but I still have a stock servo on the back, but it does just what I need it to. Um, I got a Reefs RC um, 422 HD V2 on the front, brushless steering servo, uh, 400 and some odd ounces, ounce inches of torque, works out great. Got a Micro Mamba castle system in it with a 2850 kV motor. You could go higher kV with this uh, three gear transmission, especially with the portals. You would be completely fine with that but this truck is insanely slow. It's very, very slow. So after you have done that with your electronics, I would, and guys, you don't have to do this in any specific order, just, you know, as you want to. Um, I went ahead and put some overdrive gears in this truck. Overdrive helps out tremendously on your turning angles, um, some of your climbs it helps um i've just mostly i've noticed on my steering and you know your turning radius and all that good stuff that's what i've noticed most but for the buggy style capper that is what i recommend oh and some brass portal weights for the front you can add them to the rear if you like a little bit more weight on your rear to keep it more planted but i do not have them as you can see here do not have them on the rear get it turned around here I do have them on the front. So there you are with that. And also another thing, you can go with regular 4.75 inch uh, tires. These ruptures are just a tad bit bigger, which I like for the Capra. I think these Capras need a tire that's in between a 2.2 and a 1.9, as in something in between like a 5.0 six and a 4.75 somewhere in the middle ground it's like a 5.4 would be the best way to do it and i've noticed west desert wheeler he actually fuses tires together taking two sets of tires and fusing them together to make a 5.4 for his capers which works out very well so all in all guys that's um in my opinion one of the best ways to make your axial capper perform to its fullest you can do that and if you want to go all out, you can uh, do what I've done here and switch it over to a um, flat rail chassis, which both of these trucks perform well in their own ways. And I guarantee you this truck right here will keep up with that truck any day. As long as the driver mod is there with it to back it up and all that good stuff. I am a little bit better at driving a dig vehicle than rear steer, but nonetheless, I like both. So that's gonna be a personal preference. You can run both. If you wanna do like an unlimited type class, you can put dig in this truck and still have your rear steer and be perfectly fine with that. But I just like to do one or the other. I don't wanna overcomplicate things. But guys, that's, uh, that's what I'm gonna to recommend to you guys for these Capras. Um, awesome trucks, probably one of the best trucks that you can buy straight out of the box if you want performance. 
if you're not into doing all these custom builds and everything buy you a four wheel steer capper like this do those mods that i just mentioned and you will be completely satisfied with the truck and its capability but if you also come from you know building more comp style trucks with um, other platforms you'll notice that it's not the best but it's still very good especially if you haven't entered the comp scene a whole lot this truck right here will definitely bring you into it because this is what brought me into it but if you guys have any questions about uh, any of the parts or anything like that uh, feel free to leave a comment below I will gladly answer and respond to you for any question that you have and I can help you with I'm trying to get back on my truck I'm getting on a rant and I'm just not even paying attention to what I'm doing or driving but that right there guys that's that's basically the gist of it and i also this is kind of an optional thing i put a uh i'd rather have like some d's rc limiting straps or shock bands i mean but i just put a bungee cord there it works out pretty well the same if i wanted to clean it up a little bit i'd put the uh, d's rc on there look a little bit better but all in all guys Trade out your stock radio. Get you a Fly Sky GT5. They work out very well. Gives you a little bit more adjustability on your trims and settings. But other than that, that's all I got for that, guys. Uh, like I said, if you got any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all the wonderful things. Ring the notification bell just so that you can be updated every time a video goes out on this channel. And I want to thank every single one of you for watching my videos and the continuous support. It means a heck of a lot to me, and I appreciate it, you guys. Keep up watching the channel, and we will see you guys in the next one.